Public hearings begin June 9th for the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Among those who are likely to figure prominently in their findings, Ali Alexander, the Republican political operative behind the so-called Stop the Steal campaign. Let's terrify this town. Right Wing Watch extensively investigated the Stop the Steal campaign ahead of the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Here's what you need to know. So who is Ali Alexander? And what is Stop the Steal? On November 4th, 2020, Donald Trump falsely claimed that mail-in ballots were being used to steal the election, and he declared himself the victor. Waiting in the wings was Ali Alexander. He publicly Stop launched the Stop the Steal, a campaign to get right-wing activists to discredit mail-in voting, disrupt vote counting, and falsely accuse local officials of stealing the election. Ali Alexander served as the lead organizer. He called on his deep network of Republican legislators, political strategists, and far-right activists to join the effort. These were people he knew through his years in Republican politics and from his time as a member of the highly secretive Council for National Policy, whose influential members include the likes of Jenny Thomas. The campaign targeted Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Georgia, battleground states won by Joe Biden and whose cities are home to large black and brown populations. Ali Alexander and his cohort held rallies and spread disinformation. Along with Trump, Stop the Steal falsely claimed voter fraud was widespread, even after Trump's own DOJ found no such evidence. So how did Ali Alexander and Stop the Steal contribute to January 6th? In mid-November, far-right members of Congress, conspiracy theorists, Christian nationalists, extremist groups, and Trump diehards came together under the Stop the Steal banner in Washington, D.C. Newly elected, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boebert, and Madison Cawthorn addressed the crowd alongside organizers. Radical conspiracy theorist Alex Jones brought an InfoWars caravan. Members of the neo-fascist Proud Boys roamed the streets looking for fights and found them late in the evening. White nationalist Nick Fuentes and his America First group commanded the crowd's attention. Violent rhetoric became a key feature of these events. During a December Stop the Steal rally, Stuart Rhodes, the leader of the anti-government extremist group Oath Keepers, called on Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act and declare martial law. If he does not do it now, while he is commander in chief, we're going to have to do it ourselves later in a much more desperate, much more bloody war. In late December, Ali Alexander claimed credit for organizing the event that would take place on January 6th, along with three congressmen. I was the person who came up with the January 6th idea with Congressman Gosar, Congressman Mo Brooks, and then Congressman Andy Biggs. Alexander spent weeks leading up to the attack calling for rebellion. He even appeared to call for physical attacks on members of Congress. To all these weak need Republicans, I say, what would you do if somebody broke into your house and stole something and they were, well, I don't want to say steal in your front yard because I know what we do. Let's say they made it out to the road. I don't want to be accused of anything yet. Yet. Let them hear that, yes. yes. On January 5th, Alexander held a rally by the White House. He said that the Stop the Steal activists were starting a rebellion against the deep state, and he began chants of victory or death. Victory or death! Victory or death! Ahead of January 6th, Trump had called for a wild protest at the U.S. Capitol. Alexander had used that to promote his own wild Stop the Steal rally at the Capitol. On January 6th, Ali Alexander was a VIP attendee at the Save America rally on the Ellipse. We will stop the steal. When Trump told the crowd to march on the Capitol, Alexander joined Alex Jones walking past barricades onto the Capitol grounds and up the Capitol steps, where Trump loyalists were fighting their way inside. The two retreated to a terrace overlooking the Capitol. Despite what he had seen up close, Alexander claimed that it was peaceful. I don't disavow this. I do not denounce this. This is completely peaceful. But he didn't stop there. Stopthesteal.us is going to be the home of the rebellion against an illegitimate government. So you're wondering, what's happened since? Ali Alexander went underground following the attack on the U.S. Capitol. He got kicked off mainstream social media platforms and lost access to Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, claiming Twitter trolls had taken everything from him. Last fall, the House Select Committee issued three subpoenas, one to Alexander, another to the Stop the Steal organization, and a third to Nathan Martin, an associate of Alexander's. In December, he testified for eight hours behind closed doors. This spring, his lawyer said he would cooperate with the Department of Justice, but the next day, Alexander joined Alex Jones on his Infowars show to suggest he wouldn't. Alexander has denied wrongdoing and has called Stop the Steal beautiful. 
January 6th, he said, was a government psyop, a conspiracy to prevent Trump from winning in 2024. His violent rhetoric hasn't stopped either. He mused to Alex Jones that there's time for legitimate violence when there's legitimate tyranny. We're likely to see and hear more about Alexander and his coordination with members of Congress at the House Select Committee hearings. Right Wing Watch will be tracking the hearings and keeping you up to date on everything you need to know. Follow us here and visit rightwinginsurrection.org to find out how you can take action.